Yeah, we do have time for a few short questions. If anybody wants to come up here, go, go, go. Hello, I'm Jesper. Uh, I was just wondering when, when, when you were in one of these conversations, and and there comes a point when you're really annoyed, and it gets to fuck ass. I mean, this this atheist Tourette's isn't really the best cure for it to love your enemy and really find goodness in them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely avoid atheist Tourette's. I think that that's a good. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, do, do whatever it takes to realize that, you know, the, the person you're talking to is a human. Uh, and I know it's difficult at first. And especially for me, you know, when, like I said, when I first became an atheist, I was just so excited about it. And um, I was just so sure that I was right about everything. And everybody else was just so stupid and wrong. Um, but, you know, eventually I, I think I've mellowed out a bit. And I like to encourage everyone to just kind of take a step backward, count to 10 if you need, before blurting out expletives. <laughs> um, yeah, does that cover it? <laughs> Hello, my name is Cecily, and I have a question for you that is not actually on the topic of your talk today. That's fine. But I've been sort of observing the audience, and I noticed that there doesn't seem to be like a 50-50 gender rate. Uh, right here among the, um, the listeners, mm. or, and also on the internet, if you look at who publishes the blogs, it's mostly guys. And I was wondering, why do you think there are not more female skepticists in the world, and, and what can we do to get more? Mm. That's a great question, an enormous can of worms. Uh, and it's the reason why I did a talk on feminism and how it relates to skeptic skepticism and atheism, because um, I felt that the community was missing that particular voice because uh, there are just so few women. So why are there so few women? I mean, you'll hear the theories that you know women are just uh, less skeptical than men biologically. They're pretty little brains can't handle it. Um, you know, I, I think that it's just, it's a cultural thing. I, uh, you know, and I can't really speak to, to, to Denmark, but I know that in, in the States, um, women are still, unfortunately, not really encouraged to speak up and stand out. And skepticism, by its very nature, is, is contradictory. And that can be very difficult because women are in general taught that it's better for us to uh, be kind and mothering and, and gentle. And so you, you have a ton of men in the, in the skeptical community and that tends to just um, happen again and again. Women can come in, they'll see no other women there and they'll, they'll run back out the door. Um, so what I like to focus on is creating a more welcoming environment uh, for women. Um, it's, it's one of the reasons why we set up Skeptic, because we felt that that voice was missing. And you know, there, there have been a lot of studies that have shown that women are more encouraged and do better when they see other women in positions of leadership. So I also encourage um, conferences to try to get on more women who might be lesser known now, but who might be just as interesting and might present just as powerful ideas as the men. Um, because once we, we get them on stage, I think it'll be um, self-propagating in a way. We'll get more women coming out and it'll be a bit stronger. Um, and the other thing that I like to do is um, talk to people about how skepticism isn't just about confrontation. It's not just about saying that you're wrong. Um, it can also be very compassionate. And I think we've seen that in, in some of the talks uh, at this conference, in fact, where you, you, you're very focused on the evil that religion can do or can uh, encourage in people. So, you know, a lot of skepticism is about consumer awareness, about preventing people from getting scammed. And that is something a bit closer to what we consider a traditional feminine role. Um, and it's very true of skepticism. I'd love to see that sort of highlighted more. I find it very difficult because I don't think I'm a very compassionate sounding person in general because I'm a bit snarky. But uh, I, I always love to see um, to see anyone, men, men or women, stepping up and presenting skepticism in that light because I think it makes it much more accessible to the general population. So. 
just as an organizer to comment on that. We would love to have more female presenters, but it's very hard to find any. I mean, I think we did a good job this year, actually. We have a lot of great speakers from mm. both male and female. Yeah. I know that this is something that a lot of organizers run into. It is because, you know, what happens is, you know, it's been, there have been so many men for so long that that's what people know and that's what people will buy tickets to see. You want the big names there, you know, you, you need to sell tickets, you need to fill the seats. Um, so, you know, but at some point you got to let some lesser known names in and, you know, as they get better known, then, you know, I think that things will start to balance off. I think it's a slow process, but I think that, um, you know, organizations like Skeptics in the Pub are great for that because you've got a speaker every month, so there's a great opportunity there to get in some lesser known women and give them the audience that they deserve. Thank you. Let's thank Rebecca. Thank you. Oh, wait, I've got two minutes. Where's the girl who asked the, the question? That was, a good, that was a good question. Would you like some peanuts? <laughs> Take the peanuts. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> we have a ten-minute break, and we will be back here with Paula Kirby. And uh, I will tell you we'll talk about Teresa and the next. There you go. <laughs>